Hey guys, welcome back to Greg's Fish Room. It's not quite springtime yet, so it's not quite pond season or greenhouse season, but I've got a lot of exciting things going on outdoors that I wanted to share with you before the season kicks off. So as you may know, I have a thousand gallon in ground pool for my goldfish. I also have a quite large greenhouse behind me um, that's set up for aquaponics, that has IBC totes in it, that has Laguna totes in it. Um, I've done a lot over the last few years that I haven't recorded on video, so I wanted to take this opportunity before things start opening up and becoming green and growing, I wanted to take the opportunity to walk through the entire system, what I have and what my plans are for this year. So come along with me and learn how to be a better aquarist. So here we are outdoors. The snow has melted, but it is still quite cold and I'm sure we'll get a little bit more ice on this pond before spring is truly here and things start warming up. So uh, as you may recall from past years and past videos, I installed this thousand gallon preformed pond in the ground, built this nice patio around it and uh, built a greenhouse next to it. And so these systems are tied in together. Uh, the pump is off right now for the winter, obviously, but we do have air uh, still flowing. And so this is to keep a hole in the ice all winter long. It works really well. I just have a big air stone uh, in the pond itself and then a linear piston air pump that's in my greenhouse to uh, keep the snow and ice off of it. So we got some leaves floating. I clean those up every once in a while. See the water uh, is a little bit green right now because you know there's no um, UV sterilizer plugged in, there's no water flowing, there's no filtration on. But one thing that's new is over here. So let's walk over here. So I installed this last year as an addition to my filtration system here out in, for the pond. Um, my original filtration system was not adequate. So I went ahead and took this uh, spare uh, rain collection barrel. It's usually used to collect rain from your gutters and store it for uh, you know watering your plants and whatnot. I went ahead and dug that into the ground about halfway and you can see we've got a uniseal, a two inch uniseal and a PVC pipe. So this is where the water returns back into the thousand gallon pond. Uh, I have a large water pump in the pond itself and that pumps water up into the greenhouse, which we'll go take a look at uh, in a minute. But all of the water that overflows from the greenhouse, all the tubs and totes in the greenhouse, all that water overflows. It actually goes underground here. It takes a 90 degree turn here and comes into this filtration barrel, uh, actually a little bit underground right over here. And so this is essentially acting as my uh, moving bed filter. I have K1 uh, media in here. And so that's got a large air stone in there. It's got a lot of water flow in there. And then I have screens in there to make sure that it all stays in there and it doesn't get flushed out uh, into the pond. So that's a look at the barrel for my filtration. Again, a new addition this past year. We'll see how it works this year. This will be its first full year uh, in operation. Pretty excited about it. I'm hoping that I didn't get any damage or cracking to any of the pipes uh, underwater. It's all been flushed out. There's, you know, there shouldn't be any water in them, but we'll see. You never know. Um, in the past, you may have seen the goldfish in here. We're not gonna see them today. It's just way too cold and they're all way down at the bottom. But in future videos, I'm sure you'll see the goldfish in here. They've grown quite a bit and uh, happy to show those to you uh, when the time comes. But for now, they're four feet down in the water here and uh, it is quite cold out. So I'm sure they're not gonna come up to the top anytime soon. All right, it's getting kind of cold out here. It's a little warmer in the greenhouse. So let's go take a look at what I've been up to in the greenhouse since you've last seen it. Okay, now we're over on the other end at the greenhouse. This is a Grandio greenhouse. This is a 12 foot 
by 16 foot greenhouse and it's got a great footprint to do a lot of stuff inside and so some of this may look familiar to you i have six of these laguna 60 gallon tubs that are all along this wall i have used these for aquaponics in the past and they're all still hooked up rigged up um, i did change the the overflows they used to be on the back side but a few of them were leaking and so i completely tore everything out last year flipped them around so now the overflows are on the front side and everything runs on the front so you can uh, see it and if there's an issue uh, anything's leaking it's uh, a lot easier to fix so six laguna 60 gallon tubs over here uh, we can briefly touch on the greenery that's been overwintering here uh, in the greenhouse. These are Procumbens uh, Nana. They are uh, essentially pre-bonsai. I've got a bunch of them that have been growing out. Some, the larger ones need to be repotted. There's a little bit of brown uh, in the leaves. But um, I, I really want to sort of hone and refine my bonsai craft and this guy is, I think, three years old. It needs to be repotted quite desperately. Um, but hoping everything survives the winter here. They have the past few winters. And then they'll move outside because uh, Procumbens nana is a pretty good species that can overwinter quite well and uh, survive all four seasons, uh, at least around here. So they do a little bit better in the greenhouse just because the chill stays off of them. So. They're all up here, um, but all of these trays will be moved out of the way and all of these uh, plants will be moved out of here to give us full access to all of these tubs here uh, coming up in the spring. And speaking of these Laguna tubs, um, I'm thinking I'm going to do something a little bit different this year. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go full-blown aquaponics. Uh, I haven't had a ton of success with many vegetables in here. The fact of the matter is uh, the sun sort of rises over here and then sets over here and there's too many tall trees in the way and so I don't get enough sun. I get sun maybe three, four hours a day in this greenhouse and it's just not enough to grow vegetables uh, to full size and to get uh, get much out of them. So instead what I have discovered is that it's the perfect amount of light for growing a lot of floating plants. So I may look to do some uh, frog bit and maybe some azola and um, on and on and on. And I'm, I'm hoping to pick six different floating species of aquatic plants and keep one in each one of these Laguna tubs. That's the current plan anyways. A few other things I've been thinking about doing with them is one, I could use them as a uh, fry grow out for my Spanish rib newts. Uh, they do fairly well uh, in the outdoor environment at least three seasons out of the year. So I could experiment with that to see if they this gives them more space to grow out. And the other thing I was thinking about is turning a few of these into some alive blackworm cultures and putting in a layer of gravel and seeing how that does. The only thing about that is I'm not sure this water height is maybe an issue uh, for them, for those colonies to get well established because they do like shallower water. But anyways, that's the left hand side of this greenhouse. And as you can see, it runs all the way from the door. Uh, we've got our cinder block stand with, I believe, two by sixes uh, spanning across them. It goes all the way from the door all the way in almost to the end so six laguna tubs fits pretty well in here now in terms of the water and sort of how it gets to those tubs as i said we've got the the pond pump that's in the thousand gallon pond outdoors that gets pumped up through the ground uh, through this one inch line which is currently disconnected but that usually goes into my large uv sterilizer here which is sort of drained out right now and then that comes up here uh, it used to split off and go to this side and this side but i found uh, because the heights were different between the ibc totes and the laguna tubs 
it was really difficult to balance the flow. Uh, so what I did was I just cut it and I installed another pump. So we'll talk about the IBCs in a second, but uh, essentially all of the water from that pond is pumping up into the Laguna tubs. So it goes through that UV sterilizer and it comes up over here and then we've got six of these outlets here to spill water into each of these Laguna tubs. And then you can see the overflows here. We just got a one inch overflow and then that uh, drains down into my two inch drain line. So that drain line runs the whole distance here and then it snakes over, connects to the other side, again goes down underground and then over to uh, that green um, barrel that we have half dug into the ground that we just took a look at. So that's how the water gets in, that's how the water gets out. Those are my current plans with these tubs. They get the most amount of light, as you can see, and so uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited to try growing some floating plants, at least two seasons out of the year, to see how they do and uh, see if I can grow enough to, to actually sell them. So if you have any ideas for floating plants, let me know. Uh, I'm curious what might have the best demand or have the best price uh, for floating plants, so I'll give it a try. All right. This entire right side of the greenhouse is brand new construction. Uh, I used to just have pallets here full of uh, product and that's all been moved out and now I have four IBC totes that are fully installed and operational on this side and I have to say it is probably one of my favorite containers for fish keeping, hands down. I've always wanted them. Uh, I've always seen other people utilizing them and just the amount of space and the cost per gallon is just unbeatable. It's, you just, you can't match it. And so these are, I believe, 275 gallons each. Um, and I forget what they cost me. I, I think it was under $100 delivered. Uh, so can't beat that. And uh, it, they're all food grade, so there are no worries there. I did thoroughly clean them, and you can see I did a pretty neat job with uh, cutting the, the top open here. I still have the support braces in place, and um, as I, I talked about, we have another one inch pump uh, coming in up over here and then spilling into um, these four IBC totes. And then each of these totes has an overflow as you can see inside there and then those again are spilling over this is a one inch bulkhead spilling over into a two inch drain line which again connects uh, down here and if we pull this out of the way you can see we've got a little access port and uh, so we can hear it and we can see the water flowing from there when it is flowing so these are the IBC totes, and I would say um, I probably underutilized these last year, but I was just getting set up and just getting operational. And so by the time I had most of the fish that I wanted, it was the fall time and it was ready to bring them inside. I considered for maybe a week or two, leaving one of these operational and full of water over the winter throwing some heaters in them and seeing if I could keep uh, some of my fish alive over the winter out here. Things like rainbow shiners or madaka rice fish that can survive very low temperatures, but I was trying to potentially aim for 50 degrees Fahrenheit and I just thought winter in New England, you know, we're inside a greenhouse but it's still cold. Uh, it would probably cost too much money to heat the, this amount of water uh, over the entire winter. So I broke down, scrapped that plan, and I just brought everything in in the fall. But we do have four tubs here to work with. And I would say last year, the one fish that I had a ton of success with was all the way down here on the far side. And I put uh, about six or eight adult white cloud mountain minnows in that IBC tote all by themselves. And by the end of the summer, I had probably at least a thousand full grown fish uh, from, from that group. They are an egg scatterer. And most of the time, if they're kept in an aquarium, they're going to um, 
all the eggs are just going to get eaten. Like, they'll lay eggs every morning, but they, they all get eaten. And they're very tiny. But I found that, you know, like, this container is large enough that there's no way that they can eat all of their eggs. And so, um, even if they did end up eating some of them, there's no way they could have found them all. Uh, in a container this size, which is really interesting because it more accurately reflects nature, right? Uh, the, the fish in nature are just going to keep swimming around and they're going to deposit eggs and then forget where they deposited them um, and then they're not going to be able to eat all of them. So the fact that it's darker on this side and this water is really deep and it's a lot of surface area for just a few tiny fish meant that I was getting a ton of eggs out of this uh, IBC tote. And I'm going to try to replicate that success this year. And I already have all the fish to do so. So my current plan is white clouds in one of these IBC totes. I've got golden white clouds for another one. I've got Vietnamese white clouds for the third one. And then I've got rainbow shiners for the fourth one. And uh, I think all four of those fish should do really, really well in a species only IBC tote meant for breeding. And the way I intend to do it this year is a little bit different. Uh, I've got these super cheap um, laundry baskets. I was like, you could put one coat in this and it would probably fall apart because it's it's so flimsy. But for me, it's great because it, it's not going to be holding uh, really any weight at all. Uh, what I'm planning on doing is putting a foam backer rod up at the top to uh, keep this uh, as a floating basket and then affix some netting material to the sides. And then on the bottom, I'm going to glue in place some rocks, some river stones. Um, that way I can keep all of my adult fish floating up at the top here in a breeding container. And then when those eggs are scattered, I should get close to 100% capture rate on those eggs this year. Uh, because they'll, they'll sort of fall through the, the rocks at the bottom of this container. And then they've got the entire IBC tote to be protected and grow up in. So that's the plan. Uh, we'll see how it works. Honestly, none of this has been built or tested yet. So, uh, you know, it may completely fail and we may go back to square one. We'll just have to see. But those are future plans. Um, the only other thing I have up here you may have noticed is a couple of bins and they're full of just leaf litter. Uh, this is stuff that I raked off the top of my lawn last fall before the, the leaves got wet and gross and they've just been stored in here all winter. And I think part of the success of the white clouds last year was the fact that there was just a natural population of infusoria in the water. Because that pond is year round and because there's leaf litter in the bottom of that pond, there's always something growing, there's always something dying, there's always stuff decaying. And when you have decaying matter and you have an outdoor wild system like this, you are guaranteed to have a population of infusoria. And so I didn't even know that those white clouds uh, were laying eggs or that I had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of little baby fry. Uh, they just survived off the infusoria. I wasn't feeding them. I didn't know they were there. I wasn't even feeding them, but I ended up with a thousand of them. And, and I think the main reason is because I had so much material in the bottom of this pond, just getting pumped up and circulated that they were getting a 24 seven feast of infusoria to feed on and grow very, very rapidly. And so I thought I'd just help out a little bit this year by collecting a bunch of leaves so that I can scatter them in the bottoms of each of these IBC totes for this uh, spring and summer season. That will give me a good uh, layer of material that hopefully will slowly start to uh, rot and decay and the bacteria that grows on that rotting and decaying matter well, that's what the infusoria eats and then the baby fish uh, eat the infusoria. So it's the circle of life. This is why natural systems work so well. 
and large bodies of water are able to support uh, such large dynamic systems uh, of, of life. So I'm super excited about it. I think it's gonna work really well. Uh, my goal is going to be to pull at least a thousand fish out of each of these four IBC totes. If I can do that, I think that would be a wild success. And even if I'm selling, you know, each one for a dollar, uh, I think it's more than going to cover all of the costs in setting this system up um, in a single year. So that's huge and I'm really, really looking forward to it. So anyways guys, that's a sneak peek at the greenhouse and the outdoor pond. Before we set anything up, this is what it looks like. This is how it exists. This is how it's doing. Uh, did really well this winter. It wasn't super cold, not a lot of snow. Uh, there were a few cold days, but um, as soon as the temperatures start getting into the 40s and the 50s, and as soon as the nighttime temperatures stay in the 40s, you know, that's probably the time where I'll, I'll consider turning the water pumps back on. And one of the great things about having a system like this, where it's half indoors, half outdoors, is the water that's circulating through this greenhouse is going to get heated by the sun and it's insulated as well so it's going to be warmer than the water outdoors so i'll be able to sit, stimulate this entire system and heat it up naturally uh, and hopefully get this up and running a few weeks earlier than just an outdoor pond would be able to so hopefully i get that jump start on the season this is what it looks like. Let me know what fish you would put in these IBC totes to grow out and what floating plants you might put in these Laguna tubs. But that's the look at the greenhouse. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.